Omar Johnson is glad to be back in New York, back in the five boroughs. This is my first time to the Bronx. First time ever in the boogie damn! Hey! Beach Street is one of my favorite movies, y'all know that. That's right. KRS, one of my favorite artists. So I'm glad to be in the Bronx. I don't know why it took 10 years, but it's better late than never. But let me ask a question, because I've been trying to figure this out since I've been coming to New York these past nine years. Which of the five boroughs has the most black consciousness? All right. I want to start off tonight because it's my first time in the Bronx. And first and foremost, I'm a psychologist and an educator, first and foremost. So before we deal with the politics and the Pan-Africanism, I want to talk to all my parents here tonight. And I want to give every parent in here 10 tips for dealing with the miseducation machine. 10 tips for dealing with the mental health exploitation machine. Tip number one, for every mother, every father, every foster mother, foster parent, adoptive parent, older brother and sister taking care of your younger siblings, aunts and uncles, whomever you may be, if you are responsible for the life and education of a young African child, I want you to take these 10 tips to heart. Because if you do what Dr. Umar tells you to do, we'll never have to worry about your children being misdiagnosed, psychiatrically medicated, put in special ed jail, or being the latest casualty in the school to prison pipeline. Tip number one, never sign any paperwork that the schools in New York City give you for your child unless you take that paperwork home first. Meditate on it. Decide if you really want to sign this and then take it back. We have a bad habit. Black mothers and black fathers, we have a bad habit, auntie and uncle, of signing paperwork on the spot that we don't really understand. Are you following me? No more signing paperwork that you don't understand. 
And by the way, I see some ladies standing. If you want a seat, raise your hand, sisters, because we're going to get you a seat. Is everybody all right? Do y'all want to stand? Because if not, we can get some of these brothers to give you a seat. Y'all standing on all the food line. Oh, I'm on my shit. I knew something was, I thought it was the weed line. I'm sorry. That new government marijuana. <laughs> so number one, don't sign the paperwork. Now, as someone who works in black schools or white schools, I can tell you that they don't make white parents sign on the spot. They don't make white parents sign on the spot. They give them the letter, they put it in an envelope, and they send it home. Only in the black community do they expect you to sign on the spot. And the reason they expect you to sign on the spot is there's an assumption about you. And the assumption is you don't really care anyway. That's the assumption. So what you have to do is retrain the schools in the Bronx and Brooklyn and Manhattan, Staten Island, Queens. You have to train them in Jersey and Connecticut on how to deal with you. And the way you train them is first of all letting them know I sign nothing on the spot. Because white folks love to lie to you. And they'll tell you this is just for the free lunch. And the next thing you know, you're walking out with some free handcuffs on. So you don't sign it on the spot. And if you don't understand it, that's what I'm here for. Before you leave here tonight, every one of you want to have my personal cell phone number. Ladies, it ain't that kind of party. <laughs> you want to have my personal cell phone number. And if it's a quick question, you can text me. I answer quick questions all day long. Dr. Umar, what does this word mean here? Because I've never seen it before, and I'll tell you what they up to. You can take a picture of the form they want you to sign and text it to me. Dr. Umar, what is this? And I'll tell you, that's a permission to evaluate form, but they're disguising it. It's for a special ed evaluation, but they're disguising it. They're not going to tell you this is for special education. They're going to say this is for special health. So they get tricky with the words. So you have your own personal parent advocate in myself. And you'll have that information before we leave here today. So number one, don't sign. Number two, black mothers, my Afro-Latino mothers included, we all family. And the second point is what? Don't go to any school meetings by yourself. I hope my black mothers heard that. Because I know you strong. And I know you can do this without the father. But I don't want you going to any meetings in the Bronx by yourself because it is a setup for a setback on your child's behalf. The school is an extension of the prison system. And the principals are the new wardens. And the teachers are the new police officers. And anything you say can and will be used against you and your child. Listen, some of y'all want to say, Dr. Tumor, I don't have no support. Yes, you do. Because we have an organization that every one of you is going to join called the National Independent Black Parent Association. You understand? And we will go with you into the school if you have no one else. But even if we're not available, Black woman, take the father. If you and the father can't sit in front of white folks without fighting, take an uncle. Take a cousin. And guess what? If you can't find any alpha males, because we're running out of alpha males, we got a whole damn community full of babies. Skinny jeans and pointy dress shoes. Black woman, if you can't find a black man to go with you with a backbone, I'm going to tell you what you do. Because a lot of the professional brothers have been turned into swag for fag energy. Okay? So if you can't find a swag delicious brother, go to the corner and get pookie and rape. I'm dead serious. I'm dead serious. Because all those white teachers in the schools down Bronx Road, they scared of Pookie and Ray Ray. Because they was the ones who got Pookie and Ray Ray started in the school to prison pipeline. So bring Pookie and Ray Ray, white beater and 50 tattoos. And you bring Pookie and Ray Ray into the meeting about little Raheem. And you tell Pookie and Ray Ray, I don't want you to do no talking. Because you're going to mess this shit up. Be quiet. But, 
folks in the two coons, because it's always two coons. Every white school, every public school in New York City got two coons on the back. And what is the job of those two coons? And by the way, they may not be bourgeois. They might be hoteppers. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Baba Shaka Zulu, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Mama Coochie Chaka Lita, yeah. They on the paper. And we hate black people in charter school, South Bronx. And when the white folks can't get you to sign that paper, they'll send Mama Coochie Chaka Lita. And Baba King Tap smell like frankincense and fresh shea butter. And they will kill you into signing the paper. That's right. Don't you care about your son? We knew Dr. Umar was in the Bronx on Sunday night, but don't believe everything he said. My grandson was on Ritalin. Remember my little grand, my little grandson, Mike Mike? He was on Ritalin and Conservative. Remember my other grandson, little Charles? He was on Meditate, Whisper Dog, and Prozac. And no boys turned out fine. Yeah, they could have run a butt naked down the street last night, but that ain't had nothing to do with drugs. Yeah, they caught little Charles killing every dog in Brooklyn, but not because of the drugs. So beware of black folks who work for the school system. I'm not saying that they're all sellouts because they're not. Most of our black teachers really do care. But every school keeps two coons whose job is to make you give up your position. And what you tell Pookie and Ray Ray is when they start ganging up on me in this meeting, Pookie and Ray Ray, I want you to do one thing. Don't talk. But bang your fist real far away to this. <laughs> Open your eyes real wide. Look the cracker close. And say, I'm not going to do this. And if you do that, I bet you the whole meeting will change. The white folks will say, oh, I'm sorry, it's the wrong kid. I think we can work with him. We might not need medicine. I think we have another option we haven't tried yet. See, when you bring an alpha male with you, they deal with you differently. Oh, yes. I work in schools. I know how they do y'all. I'm a former school principal. I know how they do y'all. They love a single black mother walking into New York schools by herself. Because single black mother means no support. It means no help. It means she's stressed out. It means she'll sign anything to get us to stop calling her and leave her son alone, including that ADHD evaluation. I'm going to get to that in a minute. Because I know half y'all got y'all sons on crack for kids right now. Oh, yes. I can see it in your face. Some of y'all got kids on Ritalin right now. Concerta right now. Meditate right now. Sidewood right now. For no other reason than a white teacher told you that your baby needs medication to get an education. Since when do you need dope in order to be this educated? But this is what they created. And in a second, I'm going to show you how we got it. See, we love studying ancient history and we should. We love studying classical history and we should. We love talking about the sun, moon, and stars and we should. But this is a history I want you to master. And you will master it tonight. And this is the history of what happened from the assassination of Dr. King, 1968, until today. These last 50 years. That's what you need to master. How did you go from King to incarceration? So How did we go from Civil Rights Bill and Voting Rights Act to no identifiable black leader at all today. Jesse is gone. Isle is gone. Urban League, NAACP, Congressional Black Caucus. Nobody stand up. And guess how they disappeared? They disappeared because they only had one solution. 
And that's called voting. But guess what? You're too intelligent and your children are too intelligent. So you understand that you can't go to rape police brutality. It was police brutality that made the bourgeoisie leader extinct in today's black America. When Al Sharpton went to Baltimore and they disinvited him, when he went to Charleston, South Carolina, after the Dylan Roof tragedy, and the brothers and sisters said, no, thank you, because you don't have any solutions. So now you are living in a black America for the first time in a long time without an identified leader. In fact, what the white man has done is he has elevated athletes and entertainers and hip-hop artists to be your leaders. Show me another community where the entertainers are the leaders. Are the Jewish entertainers the leaders of Jewish people? Are the Irish entertainers the leaders of Irish people? So why are the black entertainers the leaders of black people? I'll tell you why. White supremacy cannot allow a black America without an identified leader. Do you know why? If they do not give you a leader, you will choose one from amongst yourselves. And he can't have that. Because when black people choose their own leaders, those leaders tend to be revolutionaries. So the white man says you never leave a ghetto without an identified leader. So since we don't have any black politicians that they respect, we don't have any black preachers that they respect. We don't have any black businessmen that they respect. So we're going to give them a rapper and a basketball player. People we own and people we control and people who have an insatiable appetite for white girls. Now, since we're on the topic of white girls, that is my hope. That it's not a black man in this just nature, Nazium time, <laughs> who is dating your oppressor's daughter, sister, cousin, or niece. <laughs> it is my hope that there ain't no Negroes in here coding tonight. <laughs> it is absolute, 100% unapologetically disrespectful for a black man to walk down the street with anything other than a black woman. I want to be clear about that. I want to be absolutely clear about that. Somebody texted me last week. They said, Dr. Umar, I don't know if you know this, but you're the only one of the so-called conscious leaders, and I hate to use that word because they're not leaders at all, they're just YouTube agitators. But they said, you're the only conscious leader who openly says black men have no business dating white girls or other non-Africans. And they said, why do you think you're the only one? The rest of them are pro-black too, but they won't go that far. I said, because they like to dip once in a while. <laughs> and some Chinese cookies. <laughs> Every once in a while, they want some East Indian cookies. Every once in a while, they want some stale-ass vanilla cookies. <laughs> and for the life of me, and I mean no disrespect to white women, I have two daughters, and I want white women to respect my daughters, and I respect white women. But I don't understand what the black man finds attractive about the white woman. I'm not being disrespectful. But when I look at her and compare her to the goddess, I don't see anything even close to a black woman. First of all, black women know how to cook. <laughs> and you know damn well Betsy can't even make a damn egg sandwich without screwing. She don't know nothing about no jerk sauce or no paprika. She give you an extra thick, cold mayonnaise sandwich straight from the dungeons of Europe. <laughs> Black women know how to smell all good with all those shake butters and almond butters and 
cocoa butters and peanut butters. White woman don't have that scent with her. The black woman's skin has a fragrance that's like no other woman. And then you look at the shape. Good God. I don't care if she's petite. I don't care if she's slim thick. You know slim thick, right? They petite, but they bulge. I don't care if she's voluptuous or full thick. Black woman got a swag and a bounce and an elegance that no other woman on earth can even imitate. But let me be a little bit more clear with you tonight, Bronx. My objection to interracial dating is not based on emotions. It's based on economics. Marriage is a financial contract. I don't care how much you love somebody, marriage is about sense. If you don't believe, I want you to go to divorce court tomorrow. And I want you to tell me how many people you saw in front of the judge asking for half of their love back. Who the hell goes to divorce court looking for half of their sex back? Who goes in the war court looking for half of my back massages back? Ain't nobody care about none of that. They in there to get assets, homes, businesses, 401ks. Marriage is financial. For the white girl, for the black man, it's emotional. If you don't believe me, go ask Bill Cosby. My North Philadelphia brother, 82 years old, in a general population prison in Pennsylvania right now because he fell to forget that white folks do not put black people in categories. I don't care if you got one degree, eight PhDs, or a 1970 GED, your ass is Negro. <laughs> Bill Cosby thought because he was Bill, first black actor with a major TV show. He thought he made it in the honorary Caucasian club. Some of you Negroes here tonight think you in the honorary Caucasian club. Oprah Winfrey once thought she was in the honorary Caucasian club. But I remember I was in Bermuda speaking a couple of years ago. And they told me in Bermuda that Oprah came to Bermuda to buy a vacation in a private white community in an all-black island. And the white folks voted that Oprah could not purchase a property. And she had more money than all the white folks put together in the community. And they said, we don't want Oprah. What is the message, New York City? The message is money has nothing to do with power. And until you understand that, you will never understand how they was able to disinvite my other North Philadelphia brother, Kevin Hart, from hosting the Oscars. See, Kevin Hart being kicked off the Oscars had nothing to do with a gay tweet 10 years ago. It had everything to do with the fact that we already had enough black people hosting the Oscars, we don't need another one, especially not a dark skin one. So what they did was they used LGBTism as a white supremacist weapon to keep a black man from hosting by turning Kevin Hart into the perpetrator when he was really the victim. They took Bill Cosby, legally blind, 82, and they went and found 40 nasty looking mayonnaise white girls. <laughs> and all these white women got into a Buddhist meditation circle at one time. And they started floating and said, We were sexually harassed 40 years ago. Excuse me. Can I ask you a question? What white woman is going to wait 40 years to tell a black man who's guilty? At the time of the alleged abuse, Bill Cosby was the number one television personality in the country. And you say nothing while you're a young, thought to be attractive white girl. You wait till you're 40 years old and nasty looking to finally say Bill Cosby.
We know you love your son, but I have a doctorate from Harvard. We know you love your son, but I've been a reading specialist for 20 years. We know you love your son, but I was National Teacher of the Year last year. And they throw out degrees and titles to make black women think white folks know more about your child than you do. And I'm here to let every one of you parents know something. Don't you ever forget it, Bronx. You are always the expert on your baby. Listen, I believe I'm the greatest school psychologist who ever lived. But I still don't know your child better than you do. Listen, when I evaluate a child, I might spend two, three days with your child. I might spend two, three days evaluating, observing your baby. That's it. And from three days of testing, they're asking me whether or not Raheem has a reading disability. Whether or not Shaquita has a math disability. Whether or not little Tay Tay is emotionally disturbed. Whether or not baby King Tut <laughs> has attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. And what I need everybody in here to understand is you cannot prove a learning disability. That's right. I hope you're listening because I know I got some black parents in here with parents with boys and girls with IEP. He got an IEP for reading. She got an IEP for reading comprehension. She got an IEP for math calculations. He got an IEP for math reasoning. He got an IEP for oral expression. She got an IEP for listening comprehension. And guess what? I can't prove none of them. You cannot prove a learning disability, parents. There's no blood test. There's no urine sample. There's no MRI. There's no CAT scan. There's no DNA sample that can tell you if your child has a reading disability. It is nothing but a professional opinion that Neanderthal gave you. <laughs> but why do you say that? Because 99% of all school psychologists in America are something other than black. Let me say it again. 99% of all school psychologists in America are something other than African. Let me say it again. 99% of the people put your child in special education, don't look like them, and don't understand them. This is why if I lived in the Bronx, Harlem, Queens, Brooklyn, Staten Island, Jersey, and they asked me to get my child evaluated, if I thought he needed it, I would demand a black psychologist or none at all. If I knew what I know, no white person is ever sitting in front of my little girl and testing my baby without me being in the damn room, first of all. Because I don't know if y'all know, psychological evaluation is a one-on-one -on -one thing. Oh, yes. So not only is they testing your baby, they doing it with nobody around. Oh, yes. I once worked at an african Center charter school where the speech therapist was sexually confused. And he would take little black boys in his office to give them speech therapy. Now, this was a damn King Tut Academy. And at a King Tut, beat your drum, eat your veggie wrap, burn your frankincense incense. They was letting black boys go in a room with sexually confused Neanderthals to get their speech therapy. Well, wait a minute. If he's getting speech therapy, that means he got trouble speaking. So if something happens in that room and he needs to tell you about it, will he be able to? I'm giving y'all the facts. Before anybody takes my child out of the classroom, I need to meet with that person first, and they better be like my child. And then they're going to say this. We don't have enough black school psychologists in New York City public schools. And then you're going to answer this. That's not my problem. <laughs> if you want him tested, it will be by somebody who looks like him. Oh, yes. The IEP don't stand for Individual Education Plan. It stands for Individual Incarceration Plan. If a black boy can't read by the time he finishes the fifth grade, there's an 85% chance he'll 
He'll be spending some of his adulthood in prison. And guess what? I'm not going to blame the white folks totally for this. I'm going to blame you, Negroes. And let me tell you why. Two months ago was Christmas. And black New York City spent over $8 billion on Christmas gifts. And most of you bought your child Christmas gifts that had nothing to do with academic improvements. You brought video games, sneakers, big screen TVs, laptops, cell phones, and as a result, of the YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, iPad, cell phone, and laptop culture. Black kids don't spend any time in recreational reading anymore. Listen, Chinese kids are no smarter than yours. No, no, I'm saying. But they spend 15 hours a week studying outside of school. White kids are no smarter than yours but they spend eight hours a week studying outside of school. Guess how much time the average Negro child spends in the United States of America reading outside of school? 45 minutes a week. And I'm blaming you for that. That cell phone is the reading disability. That iPad is the math disability. That big screen TV, that's the emotional disturbance. By buying your child all of these expensive gifts, you are investing in his future incarceration with your Christmas money. I was on the phone with a mother from New York last night. She said, Dr. Kumar, my son, excuse me, New Jersey. My son is in school in New Jersey. He's in third grade. They want to test him for special ed. The white teacher said he needs extra help. What should I do? I said, get him the extra help. So are you saying I should let him get tested for special ed? Hell no! So what am I supposed to do? What are you supposed to do? Sit his ass down at the kitchen table and start working with him 90 minutes a night. That's what the hell you're supposed to do. And don't get me wrong. Because sometimes the black mother and black father are not the ones to work with your own child. Because some of you are too verbally abusive to your own child. Some of you demand perfection from your own child. Some of you will do nothing but lower the self-esteem of your own child. So I recommend that you get your child a tutor. Look at all the retired black teachers we got in New York City. New York City has more black retired teachers than any city in America. So why are all these black kids in special ed when you got black retired teachers who would love to tutor your child? Most of them would do it for no money at all. So why do we have a special ed problem? Why do we have a learning disability problem? Why are so many black kids diagnosed as LD? I'll tell you the answer. They don't have a learning disability. There's no learning disability in the Bronx. There's no learning disability in Brooklyn. Your son is not reading disabled. He's lazy disabled. Your daughter does not have a math disability. Your daughter has a lazy disability. Your son could learn how to read. But he's not interested. Your daughter can learn algebra, but she don't care. Because she's going to be the next Cardi B, and he's going to be the next Lil Wayne. See, the problem in the black community is we don't socialize black kids for success. We socialize them for materialism and athletics. Isn't it amazing? The black male was brought to America to do what? Sir, your value was based on what? Your physical production. And some of you fathers in here still socializing your sons to be slaves. His value in life is exclusively based on how many jump shots he can hit. His value in life is exclusively based on how many footballs he can catch. The slave was value based on physical output. The brown change is value based on physical output. One gets paid, one doesn't. 
slaves. I don't want your son to be no football player. I want him to own the damn team. I don't want your son to be no basketball player. I want him to own the damn team. It's not enough to be LeBron. You have to be the owner of the Lakers that signs LeBron's check. It's not enough to want to be a Michael Vick. You got to be the owner of the Atlanta Falcons that signed Michael Vick's check. It's not even enough to be Jay-Z. You got to be the owner who signs Jay-Z's check. Because although he owns Rock Nation, he's not signed to Rock Nation. He's signed to a white mega company whose name I forget at the time. We got to teach our children how to be bosses and stop taking losses. <laughs> Rule number three. Stop telling the school all your personal business. Rule number three. Stop telling New York public schools all your personal business. And let me tell you how this happens. They keep calling you to come pick up Raheem. Pick him up, pick him up, pick him up, pick him up. You just got a good job, good job. You on probation. Pick him up, pick him up, pick him up. So you go to school one day looking for sympathy from white folks. Then you go into the room and you say, Mrs. Slurman House. <laughs> This is the fourth time you called me to come get my son. I know he's the problem, but let me tell you why. His father's in jail. My other child's father was just murdered, God forbid. I'm a single mother raising three kids on my own, living in my mother's basement. I'm a recovering addict and I'm getting myself on my feet and I just got a new job. And Miss Lewinowski, if you work with me, if you be patient with me, I promise you, by June, I will be permanent. I'm going to get my family a nice house out in the Queens. I'll have more time to spend with my son, and you won't have to call me anymore. And guess what Miss Lewinowski going to do? Because she knows you're looking for sympathy, she's going to play your ass. When you start crying, guess what she's going to do? Start crying. Oh, Rashida, don't dare. And she's going to start rubbing you on the back, hugging you. Come on. I'm a single mother, too. Me and my husband, Tommy, got divorced last year. I've been raising little Billy and Nathaniel all along. Me and you should lean on each other. Can we pray together? Miss Rashida, I know you're not going to believe me because you're black and I'm white, but you're really my hero. And then you leave the school, and guess what happens 10 minutes later? She goes right to the white principal, and she says, uh, Dr. Silverberger, I don't want to talk about Shaquita, Raheem's mom, because I really like her. But she came to me crying today. I don't know, but she might have been high on crack. And, 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 and her clothes smell like marijuana. And I remember Raheem, he didn't come to school with the same dirty school uniform on. I don't want to get Shaquita in trouble, but I'm a teacher, which means I'm obligated to tell you if I think a child is being neglected. And because you told that white woman that you're a single mom, three kids, living in your mama's basement, the principal is going to use that and call Child Protective Services, and they're going to come out to your house, and the next thing you know, they're telling you, if you don't get them put on no medicine, we're going to take your children. Oh, yes. Talking too much destroys black families. Talking too much destroys black families. Black mother, the worst thing you can do is go to school looking for sympathy because you're not going to get it. But you will get set up to lose your kids. And then some of you say, what they want our kids for? Well, number one, America has the fastest growing LGBT population in the world. And they cannot produce biological children of their own. 
So guess where they're going to get them from? Your house. Black kids are disproportionately given to LGBT foster parents. If you don't believe me, do the research. Black kids without a home are damn near guaranteed to end up with a same-sex mother and father. And because black people don't like to adopt our own kids because we selfish as hell, they're almost guaranteed to end up with white folks. And they don't even like it when they'd rather have a home than no home at all. Not to mention that the child protective services industry is in bed with the undercover Hollywood and New York City music industry pedophile ring. Got judges and politicians and mayors right here in New York who are part of an international pedophile ring. And guess where they get most of their child victims from? From child protective services. So going to your child's school and telling all your business is the quickest way to get them inducted in the world of child sex exploitation. Keep your mouth shut. Rule number five. This is for black mothers in particular. Rule number five, black mother, do me a damn favor. When you drop your kids off in the morning for school, would you please stop wearing your pajamas into the damn school building? You damn ghetto rats. You don't wear pajamas to the damn school. What the hell wrong with y'all? And you got a girl that think you cute with the big old bunny pops on it. Old nasty weed all lopsided. Sleep in your eye. I saw a mother coming in with a damn Gucci a pajama set on with her broke ass. Embarrassing the hell out of me. You don't go to the school with no damn pajamas on. Do you know what you're telling white folks when you do that? You're saying to them, I have no life. I have nothing to do. No priorities. And as soon as I drop them off, I'm going to go back in bed and keep on rerunning the Cardi B twerk video. <laughs> and guess what? They're going to call you even more now. Never let the school know you're unemployed. Did you hear me, mothers? Don't you ever go into that school and say, I'm out of work now. That's the worst thing you can tell them. Parents who don't work are more likely to see their kids suspended, especially if they're black. And I'm going to tell you something else. Black mother, stop letting them white folks know that you're single without a man at home. Stop letting them white folks know that you're single. Y'all love to brag about how single you are. I'm a single mom. I'm a mommy and the daddy. You can't never be no daddy. There ain't no woman in here, no father. You can't be that. That's not your issue. I don't care how many chemicals and hormones you done took. I don't care how many surgeries you done had. I don't care how hard your walk is. I was walking up the street earlier. 